Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 It's every month like you do. So no worries. My much. pleasure. My honor. Thank you. Well, it's great. And it's it's really good. The, uh, you know, I know the community loves it. And we were just talking about some of the shows are getting huge of views. And that's great. And also, again, if you want to call in and you have a question, we'll try to take, uh, take that take that quick question as well. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that we wanted to talk about, that I wanted to talk in, in particular originally, uh, one of the exclusions for firearms on school grounds on gun-free zones, and we all know that there's no such thing as a gun-free zone, uh, was the exemption for people that hold a concealed weapons permit. That meant that... Uh, if you had a concealed weapons permit, you were able to go on school grounds and uh, do your business, whatever it may be, pick up your kids, visit uh, somebody at the school, whatever it may be, and you could leg- legally carry your firearm. And uh, so this uh, person, uh, Ms. Walk, decided that, oh, what a horrible thing. We've got guns in a gun-free zone. Hmm. Imagine that. And we have people that are legally licensed to carry, that are trained. Uh, that go through many hours, uh, you know, my course is eight hours just to, you know, to listen to what's going on. And um, so she decided in her way that, oh, my God, we can't have this. We cannot have guns uh, in a gun-free zone. So she wrote uh, Senate Bill 707, which literally basically ripped out of the heart of 1250 uh, that where CCW holders were exempt, mm-hmm. no longer can a CCW holder walk on school grounds in the gun-free zone. Correct. So what we've done, in my opinion, and your expert opinion, is we've taken away an opportunity that if a person with a legally licensed concealed weapons permit that is trained and knows how to use their gun could possibly stop a shooting situation, we've taken that way away completely. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I... So... My understanding now is that the only way that you can go through a gun-free zone with this new bill is that you must carry the gun as you would any other gun that's not on your concealed weapons permit, unloaded in a locked, hard-sided case. That's right. My question is, folks, that and, and sheriff, in that we have many uh, schools that you're going to drive by in the course of just driving by doing your daily stuff and is within that 1,000 foot zone. And now these people can have a problem. 26.9 C5. C5. C okay. is subdivision B, which is the carrying it on the grounds or near okay. school. Does not apply to the possession of a firearm under any of the following circumstances. When the person holds a valid license to carry firearm pursuant to Chapter 26150, blah, right, blah, blah. Right. He was carrying that firearm in an area that is not in or on the grounds of the public or private school providing instruction, but within a distance of 1,000 feet from the grounds. Okay. So that's kind of the drive-by exception. I, maybe I've got a different version. Um, 626, where's the chain? 707. Right here. Right, oh, okay. right there. When a person holds a valid license to carry the firearm pursuant to Chapter 4, so how does Chapter 4 read? That's section 20, 26150. Okay. That's the CCW. 26150, that's right. Title 4. Division 5 of Title 4 was carrying a firearm in an area that is not in or on grounds of a public or private school providing instructions, uh, but within a distance of 1,000 feet. Okay, so, all right. That's I, the I drive-by stand, exception. Okay, that, that I missed because that's in the, the original <coughs> reading of that, that wasn't in there. Well, that was added. Commitment. Yeah. That okay. was added. That's how I missed it. So, all that right. So, we amendment. answered the question about driving by. If you drive by and you have a CCW, you're okay under this provision. Right. But you still can't go pick up your kids. No, sir. No. So, we changed a gun free zone, what they're calling gun free. And it's, it was called the title, the gun free gun free school zone. Right. SB 707 firearms gun free school zone. Right. Into a what I call gun free zones are, are free kill zones. Not gun free, they're free kill. Absolutely. Um, you know, we look at Oregon, which just happened in Oregon. Um, if there had been one person in that classroom that would have been a legal licensed firearms carrier or had a firearm on the person, 
This knucklehead wouldn't have got away with anything. Would have changed everything. Would have changed everything. Yeah. But now these, uh, again, we've had we've had these conversations over yeah. and over and over on this program, and and elsewhere many many times. We're not we're not doing anything but limiting law, but but making law abiding people criminals. So, we're limiting law abiding people's right to defend themselves or others. Period. Because a knucklehead, a criminal, they don't care. They're intent on going there and doing harm. Well, like you said, Oregon was a perfect example. It's a gun-free zone. <laughs> Did it stop example. this mentally ill? This was a mentally ill individual. Perfect example. You know, and and there was nobody else to stop him. I, wh- my understanding, getting into the details of, of that shooting a little bit, all it would have taken is one teacher, one person, one janitor, whatever one it may student. Been, one student. One student. And it would have stopped the situation right Absolutely. away. Because he, he was not ready to face anybody else. If they were defenseless, he was fine. But as soon as somebody showed up with a gun, he killed himself. That's right. That's so, what happens in 90% of them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, you know, they're, they're not brave enough to take no, anybody else they're on. They're cowards. They're, they're cowards. And mentally ill. Yeah. So now we got a situation in California where this this bill <clears throat> was signed by Jerry Brown. By the way, I thought... my. My money would have been that he was just going to let it pass, and I that would have been the money I would have bet on. But he actually did sign it, so he went as far as being super, super stupid. <laughs> this this session, he has he's done some odd things. Um, I've talked to quite a few people who have who have said they're equating it to his first eight years. Okay, way and back I, when. way back when, and right. I guess the last two or three years he started doing some. Very odd decisions, and legisl and passing odd legislation, yeah. and we're starting to see it again. We've seen this. Yeah. Um, there was I can't remember the num eight, number eight sixty six eighty nine or sixty. I can't remember the. We're calling it the racial profiling. Oh bill. yes. Why don't you tell us about that? One? Law we enforcement. We have to start. We're a smaller agency, so we don't come into play until twenty nineteen or something. But we're going to have to start collecting data on every person that we that we come into contact with, the law enforcement contact with, on their race, um, what the reason for the stop was, um, if we searched them, what their, if anything was found, and as with the race part of it, we can't ask. Yeah. We can't ask the question, There's so no what's reason. your race? You can't ask um, We can't ask that so question, gotta so we got to guess. Oh, gosh. Um, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work. This is... This is Bad data is you know uh, garbage in garbage out. Gigo, yeah. the the old the old deal. Um, this is not going to be accurate data. It's going to be hard to collect. And who's going to pay for it? This is another unfunded, unfunded mandate. mandate. How many times um, have we talked about that one? We're gonna we're gonna be fighting hard from the state sheriff's level on that stance on right. that position. Um, plus, on, excuse me, on many other fronts. But this is ridiculous. You know, we've talked about these gun laws before. Different all different types of of gun laws that come up, you know, the the legislature gets inundated every right. year with right. tens, maybe I don't know. They probably have ideas of hundreds of bills, but oh, absolutely, we, we end up with a lot, and then they, they start whittle with a hundred when they whittle down, and usually there's five, six, eight, right. eleven that end up going through the legislative process into the governor's desk, and they don't do anything. And then in the same instance, he's talking about the governor is talking about. Um, we need to look at all these new laws that we're putting into our penal code, all these new criminal codes and criminal violations. It's ridiculous, but you were adding more crimes yeah. and more criminal violations right here. So he says, on one hand, we're going to try to reduce, on the other hand, he adds to it. So, you know, the, the, the guy talks out of both sides of his mouth. And this is, I know. This is one that my understanding is the Cal, Calorg. Calgun.org Org. organization is already set to file good um on this and they're going to try to get an actual restraint a restraining i don't know if it's an order in this case but a restraining order let's say on 707 so that why it's going to be uh, lined up in the ninth circuit that it is in effect and that's good. what we're trying to do good and that's the same that was the same thing that was done with the micro stamping issue right good. so we got to stay and um because that one is just if you don't understand what micro stamping is, let me explain it for you real quick. It, it, it falls into the stupid gun laws. And besides the stupid 707, we had a law that went back to Schwarzenegger, believe it or not, 
where it said that uh, all semi-automatic firearm handguns coming into the state of California must include micro-stamping. And what that is is that they micro-stamp on the head of a firing pin a particular serial number and on the breech face of the, the slide. Uh, number so that theoretically when that gun is fired it imparts that serial number onto the brass So we already know how wrong that's going to be and how there's no way anybody's going to collect the brass and know and tie it together And it just isn't going to happen. So a couple other things that uh, Camilla Harris our Attorney General didn't think about at the time Was also that uh, now we have to register fire register firing pins because what, <laughs> what happens if your firing pin breaks? Right, right, right. okay also <coughs> Uh, that breech face uh, micro stamp that's on there, my understanding is within 500 rounds, it will no longer be readable. And this came, uh, believe it or not, many, many years ago, uh, when micro stamping first became talked about, the DMV and uh, the guys that enforce different things within DMV, the law enforcement division of it, they wanted to put micro stamping on particular parts on cars so that they could go back and find those things. They did all this testing, and they found out it won't work. <laughs> so the state has already done all this testing. They already found out that it won't work, yet it's still a possibility. It's on stay right now. My understanding is there really is no way of doing this. Um, there's nobody set up to take those thousands and thousands of guns that need to be uh, have a micro stamp on it. Nobody's answered the question, what happens, can't you change your firing pin? Of course you can change your firing pin. Mm -hmm. So. Do you have to register that firing pin? Somebody can come or up one, with that answer. One file swipe. Okay. One file swipe by a knucklehead. Again, Again. this is oh, it doesn't have anything to do with catching the bad guys. Nothing. Nothing. No. Nothing. All, and, and laws in general have nothing to do with bad guys. And we all understand that because they're, they don't, they could care less. They're already bad guys. They're going to break the law, and that's part of it. So it does no good. Let's try to get some legislation that does some good. And I really hope that 707 can get overturned because we need this. This is a safety <clears throat> bill. And, uh, you know, and, and again, who's going to abide by this? It certainly isn't going to be a knucklehead. Nope. Nope, not at all. No, they're gonna they're not gonna do all. anything they can and do and will do. And now we've taken away uh, a situation for a CCW holder to maybe stop a situation. And one of the sad things is, is we don't really know that it hasn't already happened. All that news doesn't necessarily come down, especially no. good news, right? Good gun news, right? There is a possibility that we've had a couple of situations in California where a, a person with a, a legally licensed concealed weapons permit and a firearm has stopped a shooting. And, and, of course, you will never hear that. Oh, my gosh. So go figure, folks. And, and that's why I keep talking about how important it is for you to pay attention during election time on who you're voting for. Absolutely. And it starts at the local level. And remember how important it is, how important it is to get your sheriff, how important it is for the judges. It's all the way to school board, whatever it is. Pay attention. And let's, let's try to get some of these people. I don't know this woman. I don't want to know this this woman, um, like I said, she, she's from Vacaville area. Um, I've never even heard of her. And what bothers me is that obviously somebody with some knowledge of firearms had her ear and said, hey, this is a terrible thing. No, see, the, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. See, that's a problem. With these bills, this is just naivety. They're, they're, she's absolutely, completely naive. Right. All, well, they, all she thinks, I guarantee, is, oh, my God, a gun is a is a bad thing. A thing a bad, yeah. That's Guns a bad, bad thing. Guns right. are a bad thing. That's all they think. Yeah. That's just complete naivety. Yeah, it, total. it is. It's, it, it's totally nonsense. And, um, you know, I, whatever side of the fence you sit on, because I have friends that are totally anti-gun. And you know what? That's great, because those people that I know that are anti-gun, they shouldn't have a gun anyway. <laughs> That's the way I looked at it. And I told a couple of them to their face. You know, that's great. You, if you don't believe in it, perfect. I, I don't want you to have a firearm because you're not the kind of person that would step up and help protect other people anyway. So um, it, it just bothers me. And for those of you that voted for her, for shame on you. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and unfortunately. Well, this comes down to the, this comes down to representation. To representation. Where does she, what's her district? She's in one of those districts where they have uh, 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 
small areas yep. with huge populations. Yep, Vallejo, um, Vacaville's her office, Napa, Sonora. So and that's the in, whole whole argument on the, the Jefferson issue or whatever you want right. to call it, representation. This is why. They don't have a clue of what how our way of life is up here in El Dorado County or in other northern counties or, or conservative counties right. in the state where we understand firearms. We feel safe with firearms. I was raised with firearms. They weren't a curiosity to me as a kid growing up. If I wanted to go shoot guns, my dad would take me out and we'd shoot guns. Right. And I knew that if I touched a gun without his knowledge when I was little, there was going to be hell to pay. That's right. But she knows nothing. I guarantee she knows nothing about firearms. No. Nothing. Nothing. And, those are and I'd love her to come up to my office and tell me I know a lot about firearms and I'll prove her wrong. Yeah. Because it, she can't. I, I guarantee it. And of course she wouldn't do that anyway, but I would love it. I, I mean, we ought, to, we ought to send her an invitation. <laughs> the only thing you that know? stops a bad guy with a gun is a, good, a good guy, guy with, with a gun, gun, and there will always be bad guys with guns. So what do we need? More good guys with guns. Right. Right. And that's the problem, because as good guys, we're going to pay attention to the laws, and we're, of course, we're going to do the utmost that we can to abide by this stupid law because we have to yeah but it's going to be a tough one because like i said you going you guys going to pick up your kids and all that you just can't have your gun on you gotta switch to california carry law uh that does not apply to ccw yeah and it's it's i've I've, i have a son that's in the uc system right now and he's we've had just last week we had a talk about it and i said what are you going to do you know you can't have guns on campus you can't have guns in your dorm what are you going to do? And, you know, he has a plan. We've talked about it and mm-hmm. on survival and just mm-hmm. bare aggression mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. being able to overcome more, uh, another an armed force or whatever. Right. We've right. had those talks. But I, I would trust my son explicitly with the CCW on college ground. Absolutely. Explicitly. You would want it. I would want it. But, you know, he can't and he and he doesn't. He's He's doesn't want to rock the boat and put himself in a bad position either but you know i worry about him some knucklehead comes into his class what's he gonna do yeah you know he's got nothing but a book to throw on him oh yeah. they don't know sorry they don't even have books it'd have to be an ipad <laughs> <laughs> a mac that's what you know he's what got. you know what i know some of these developers they have um bulletproof vest material for, for yeah. ipads yeah well throw that at him Close well, enough. At, least, at least it might stop a, a small caliber enough for you to Move. get to them. Right. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Don't right. stop. Keep moving. Well, you know, we're taught when we're taught we're taught to go towards the fire, not away from it. And and sometimes you know you fight your urge to. Well, that's what I've trained. I'm going to the situation. But if, if I don't you're have unarmed, <laughs> if you're unarmed, yeah. it's a little bit different. Well, but look at this poor guy. This guy um, in the uh, the train incident in, in in France. Yeah. Right. He was shot seven times, and he still managed to stop the situation, him yeah. and his buddies. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Don't and ever you know, give up. You know what? And, the, and, and that is one of the things that was also taught, and, and we're getting into minutia here, and I understand that, but your brain, it's been proven that uh, a person that's been shot and says, oh, my God, I've been shot, I'm going to die, actually I dies. Die. And, and he maybe even if he possibly could have survived it, um, you've got to keep. You always have to keep in your mind. I'm going to survive this. I'm going to live through this. I'm going to make it. Stay positive. But we're way off target on what we're talking about here. But that's good. Uh, that's it's good it's stuff. sad. Yeah. Um, it, it's sad that we have this. But I think it's our duty to educate you out there to, to know that when we find out if uh, if they were actually able to get an injunction and get this in front of a court, uh, and it stayed, we will let you know. It's, I feel it's our job to ed- help you learn what's what's going on, because I know many of you are very busy in your life, and you don't have time to read these bills, but we're, we're going to do it. And uh, Now, that's uh, uh, a cow gun yeah. cow, from Chuck Michel? That's my understanding. Good, yeah. good. But they're going to work with everybody. They'll work with CRPA. They'll, they'll, good. they'll work with NRA. I'll everybody will looking- for the opportunity to write the letter. Thank you again. Just won't be as loud as they were. Um, anyway, it, yeah, well, uh, my understanding is all the gun uh, organizations are going to go ahead and um, 
throw money. I don't know about you, but I, I've I've <clears> given <throat> hundreds to these different oh. organizations to fight these things. Easy. Yeah. My wife, t- trust me. Ask my wife. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> we spend them a lot of money, but we believe in causes. And I mean, it was like my belief in the in the posse. I gave a huge donation this this year, and because I believe that good could come from uh, what different organizations are doing, and even your organizations. You know, uh, I think uh, I think it's a great great group, and uh, I'm proud of it. Um, so, too. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so anyway, be be aware of what's going on out here. Pay attention to what's happening. And, and again, we'll try to help you uh, stay on top of it as well. Is that a helicopter flying over the studio? I think it was. Might be. Maybe they know we're here talking uh, about this. Yeah, stuff, oh, my huh? God. Is, is it black? <laughs> it's only paranoia if it's not true. <laughs> That's true. That's too funny. <laughs> so we're uh, we're into the holiday seasons, and uh, one of the things that the sheriff and I talk about, uh, we try to do it every year because we want to remind everybody. Uh, one thing is that uh, November one, I believe we turn our clocks back, but uh, it's getting dark earlier, and it's going to really get dark <coughs> earlier. But th- you know, Thanksgiving beats it by that day. Uh, Halloween beats it by that day, not Thanksgiving. Uh, and we've got all these kids running around, and mm-hmm. it's, it gets dark and all that. Why don't we talk a little bit about what we should be doing with these kids' costumes as well as what parents need to do. Um, I, you know, because I think, <coughs> personally, I really like the, the reflective material that you can add on to these costumes. Sure, absolutely, that helps. Anything you can do to make your child more visible um, and safe. Uh, you know, trick-or-treat... There's a lot of real popular areas to go trick or treating mm-hmm. in, but I encourage folks go trick or treating in places that you're familiar with. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you know a lot of the residents in the area. You're familiar sure. with the folks. Um, keep your kids safe. Uh, stay out of the streets. Stay on the sidewalks. Right. Try and I'm. There's a couple areas that I see where it's just. I mean, they. It's crazy. It it's is crazy. The kids it are running everywhere. everywhere. And, you know, folks that aren't trick or treating, please be aware. Um, come Halloween night, that there's going to be kids out and about. Mm-hmm. Um, slow down, really watch. Be uh, super careful during Halloween night. Absolutely, and, um, because it it it's, takes nothing, and, and you folks know that it takes nothing for a child to dart out in front of you. And, heartbeat. Yeah. A and heartbeat. So uh, just drop that speed way down during it, uh, and then one of the nice things is um, most of the schools have some kind of little party going on sure. so they try to keep the kids safe sure um Here's another aspect of uh, halloween too is if you're out trick-or-treating where you park your car park your car in similar situate or circumstances as you would during the holiday season during christmas season mm-hmm. if you're christmas shopping or you're going to uh, different events in the community try and park in a lit- lighted area keep right. valuables out of sight um, we get quite a few, not quite a few, we get well, we more than average of our uh, uh, vehicle break-ins right. and theft from uh, up to $950. Even theft of a firearm. I know. Theft of any gun. Yeah. Doesn't matter. If, it, if, it's, if it's not worth more if than it's, uh, $950. If it's a nice uh, Sig Sauer, but it's only worth a Sig P220. Yeah. It's only worth uh, $750. Right. It's a misdemeanor. Um, that's just that's bad, bad, bad. I just had a funny side story that today I just had, uh, and, and I understand why. CDCR was uh, California Department of Corrections Rehabilitation was in my office to talk about the fire camp program, mm-hmm. um, wanting us to sign on with the MOU to provide inmates for the fire camps because, quite honestly, they don't have any more inmates that are class- classified uh, at a low enough status. Right from the state prison system to be able to, to staff the fire camp. So they're reaching out to counties to uh, sign on. Well, we're probably going to in the future sign on to the MOU just so we have that ability. Right. Not necessarily that we have to use it, but that we have that ability. But one of the, and I've said it before, we're very, very blessed. And I don't know why, it's just we're an anomaly in Alderado County that we still have room at the end. Right. We're not full in our jails. We've managed our jail population very well without having to release knuckleheads. Um, so we don't really have show the need to have to to, to show, use that type of alternative sentencing yet, although it is an opportunity. And if it if it shows that we can provide that service and, and reduce some recidivism down the road, then uh, we may 
take a harder look at it even did I, more. Did I read recently that that includes most of the fire camps in like Growlersburg up here? These are generally people with minor minor offenses, and and uh, but did I read that they wanted to include people with? Yeah, that just got burnt yesterday. Okay. They, they said, oh yeah, never mind. We were oh, just kidding. Good. Yeah, they were going to put more serious uh, violent offenders in our prison camps, and they got so much heat from it in the last few days that, uh, matter of fact, maybe it was just this morning. Yeah, it must have been. They said, it, uh, yeah, no, never mind. Good. We, we were just joking. When, it, when I heard it yesterday, when they were talking, I, I went, well, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I know things are bad if we yeah, have I mean, another do we baby want, fire, but. Do you want no. rapists and child molesters no. and, in our fire camps with track that kind of, of freedom? And, I'm sorry, but they're up there. They're running on their own, and if they're they're, they're going to take off, you just, I just know it, it happens. It happens. It happens. We even have some of the, the the better of the worst. That's right, and they that do it that. absolutely, so, absolutely. You know, we we have a situation, but hopefully, we can get out of this fire season really quick here and well, get some rain. So, in the nineties again. I know. Can in the night, in the middle of October, I I want to go out. I got my deer tag again this year, and. I hate shooting a deer and when it's warm like this oh, because awful. you got to be so careful with the meat. Hey, did you know that uh, uh, right or D three or D five? Ah, or D five. Yeah, they changed it on me. D five was sold out. Actually, sold out again. They, again. they sold out last year. Yeah, again already. And uh, I had a friend of mine. That's and how many deer are running around? You see more deer killed on the side of the road know, from cars. The insurance companies probably I, would love to see a. I have more increase. deer here on my ten acres. I don't need to go anywhere. Mm. They're all here. So no, I, I used to harvest no. the deer a year. I don't even do that. So does, does quail season open this Saturday? You don't know. I haven't paid attention to quail. It may. Uh, I hope so. That's yeah. my favorite. You like quail? Yeah, maybe if some viewers on here have nice property with quail on it. Give us a call. <laughs> Give us a call. Yeah, come on out. <laughs> that's that's my it. favorite. Yeah. They're so they're so fun and, oh, they're so tasty. Yeah. You got a dog? I used to. Uh, see, I we could do a whole either. show about the dog I used to have. Yeah, yeah. It's fun, and I, I know some of you out there are anti-hunters and all that, but if when, when done well and done properly, it's a lot of fun, and you're only Aww. taking the very few. So. But uh, no. and if it's real bad, they go to the, the, the hunting clubs. In that, in, in, like if you want to do pheasant, you have to go to a club. And, Pretty uh, much. I love Pretty pheasant. Much. Yeah. Pheasant's fun. Yeah, they're too easy to shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, if it's the caged sour ones that have been around too long, you're right. They don't, they don't get... Even the wild ones. Oh, they I fly the same. Them. They're the same. They go up and away. Yeah, up uh, and away. It's always the same. <laughs> I got a deuce one time. The owner of the club, he had pulled up and I, I, I rented... A, you know, Most of these clubs have dogs that they rent. Oh, yeah. I rented his favorite dog and she was incredible. She was a little Brittany. That dog was incredible, and it just so happened I was walking the dog. She spotted, she spotted the dog. The owner happened to just come by me, and she broke, and two went off, and I would just went boom, boom, and you th would have thought the, the the owner of the club, you would have thought I got a gold medal or something. He's yelling, yeah, that was great, it was wonderful. Thank God I didn't choke and miss. <laughs> that <laughs> it happens. Have been good. Yeah. It happens. It, unfortunately, it does. Yeah, but a good dog is a, a good, a good, good dog, dog is, is amazing. Yeah. My the dog that I had, he was a chocolate lab, and mm. there was probably between the ages of three or four and eight or nine, he actually had his own calendar. Uh -huh. And all because he hunt for anybody, he didn't have special commands. You just talk to him, right? And uh, he'd hunt for anybody. So uh, I'd have a buddy call up and say, "Hey, I'm going pheasant hunting on Saturday. Is Kona available?" No, he's Hunting with so and so on Saturday. <laughs> He's, He's available on Sunday. So from from now until the end of January during hunting seasons, that dog probably hunted. That's why he was so good because he hunted three four days a week. Wow, that's what it takes. And that's yeah. why the repetition. He was just just phenomenal, just phenomenal. You know, it, it, you remind me of a story. I used to hunt with Sheriff Basilio all the time, and he had a uh, a black lab. They called Tank. His dog was huge. And so we used to hit into the hunt into the rice, uh, the rice patties and the rice thickets in there. This dog would crash right through this stuff. <laughs> you just watch. You'd be like watching trees fall uh -huh. the way it crash through things. And uh, he, he was a great dog. By the way, I ran into Sheriff Basilio and he said to say, you're doing a good job. People. I got to go by and see him. I feel remiss. Bad. 81. Uh, God he bless looks, him. 
He looks fantastic. And like I said, we got talking, and he, and I and I, I told him about our show. He says, yeah. He says, make sure you tell John. I said, you're doing a great job, and keep it up. So God bless him. Yeah, he's a great guy. Hey, folks, we've gone over time here. Sorry about the technical glitches that we've had. We've had a few, but hopefully you get most of the show. I want to thank you for watching.